Hi students! So I wanted to share a few important things with you about your cultural heritage project that are going to help you find success when you're making your pieces, okay? Um, I'm gonna just give you some hints and tips on decorating ideas. So I know a lot of you, not a lot of you, but a few of you have said, Mrs. Olds, I haven't taken ceramics in a while or my, you know, I, I came from the freshman academy I mean, my ceramics teacher didn't teach me any of this or whatever it was. Um, and I don't know these techniques. So my advice for you is, do you remember, we have a file in, in your files. It is the document that has all those links in there that I addressed you to. Those are all decorative ideas, okay? Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you some things. This particular little vase, um, I threw it a few years ago when I was teaching Mishima, okay? My students. So this is Mishima right here. So um, our clay is gray, and when we fire it, it turns white like this, all right? So when the clay, after I had thrown this, it doesn't have to be a thrown piece, it can be a hand built. You know, like this one right here is hand built, <laughs> okay? So, um, but after it was thrown, <clears throat> I let it dry to leather hard. So like this piece is leather hard. How do I know it's leather hard? Because it's cold and it's dark gray, right? Um, so when it's leather hard, you would take Vermishima or this idea because you're, you know, you're going to have like beautiful carved uh, designs in there with a different color against a white background. Basically. So with Mishima, <coughs> you would take like let's say I wanted to do some pretty engraving, a really nice engraved design right here. Okay, I can take this wax resist. This is what it looks like in the back cabinets. <coughs> wax resist. I would get a brush. I would coat one layer of wax resist on this and I would set this down on my table and then I would <clears throat> directly head back to the sink, get a paper towel and soak it out of your brush, please. Okay, so once you get it, soak it out of your brush. Let me show you something. I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna push the pause here because a lot of times students, I think, I think that you're in high school and you should know this. Sometimes not all students do. So, hold on one second, I'm gonna put a pause in the video for a second. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> this right here is a hog hair brush. It's really thick, really thick and kind of strong. Think of if you've ever seen a hog <laughs> and you've seen the hair on their back, it's really thick. Literally, that's where they get the <clears throat> bristles for these brushes, hog hair brush. <laughs> There's uh, cream colored ones and black. So get a hog hair brush <clears throat> and you're going to just paint it on there real quickly, okay? And then you'll take the paper towel and I really want you to like put the paper towel around it and really soak it up, okay? I don't have a paper towel with me right now, but hold on one second. Okay, so I'm really soaking it up like this, okay? This is really a tissue paper, but you know, it's all I had available. But anyway, pretend like it's a paper towel. So I'm really like soaking it up like this. Then I'm going straight back to the sink, turning on the hot water, get some soap, put some soap in your hand like this, okay? Take your brush and do this and really get that soap inside, okay? Your whole hand is gonna be soapy and you're just scrubbing it inside the brush. Then put your <clears throat> brush underneath the water, hot water, not cold, come on guys, hot water. And then you're just gonna do this underneath the pot. The water's flowing down like this, you're doing this. And you're getting all the rest of that wax out, okay? Please do that. Don't ruin my brushes. Please, 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 okay? That's what you would do. While you're doing that, this piece is drying, right? This wax that you put, wherever you put it, it's drying. Then, <clears throat> after it's dry enough, you can, you can touch it with your finger and if, if it doesn't come off on your finger, you're good, okay? So then at that point, what I did is I took one of these tools. See all these tools, okay? They're all different types of ribbon tools. Um, you could take, I think with this one, I think I took a real skinny one, you can tell. I probably used this one, I'm guessing. 
But what I did is I just carved these areas out. Carved them out. I wanted it to look like little little flowers are just coming into bloom. They haven't quite opened up in bloom, so that's what this idea was. Kind of simple idea. Um, so you would carve in because it's leather hard. That's why you want it to be leather hard. You don't want to be carving it at any other stage. Um, so this this piece happens to be one of my ceramic four students who just started on it, so it's kind of rough. Um, it's gonna look so much better when he's done. This is only day one. This is what he accomplished on day one. But <clears throat> he could have waxed this out first and then carved these, you know, but it's whatever. So once it's waxed and you have carved, then at that point, how did I get this red, right? I took an underglaze. Now this one is a blue. This one's a blue green. But notice how it says underglaze right here, okay? But I took an underglaze that was red and I painted it over the top of this. Paint, paint, paint. The whole thing was wax. The wax protects your clay, okay? So you just take your underglaze, you just paint the whole thing like that. It gets down into all the carved areas, okay? And I think I did two coats. Do one coat, do two coats. You're going to notice that the wax, it's called, remember guys, it's called wax resist because it resists. It's going to push your color away. It's not going to accept it. And so then you're going to see <clears throat> about when I was finished with it and I let it dry, I saw a bunch of like bunched up little dots of red, you know, kind of pooled up, but it wasn't penetrating into the clay because the wax was protecting it. So what you do then is you get one of those little round yellow brushes, put some water on it, squeeze it out, Don't no, no sopping water dripping across the room, but get it wet and then, and then squeeze it out. And then just take it and just kind of wipe gently, gently. Don't scrub or you're going to scrub all your color out, but just wipe gently. And then you can take a Q-tip, which is in one of those drawers in the back by the sink, and you can Q-tip if you see like little areas, like, oh, there's a little bit right there, you can like Q-tip it. They're not out, you know? And then you just leave it. And then you let, you let this dry to bone dry, and then we fire it, <clears throat> and it comes out. So, let me explain something to you, okay? We have, in ceramics, we have high gloss, we have semi-gloss, and we have matte, okay? So on your pieces, if you want your pieces to be high gloss, you would use a glossy glaze, which are any of these glazes here. Um, my aides, Savannah and <clears throat> Amy and Sam are working on these little round tiles. I'll show them to you. And they are your sample tiles. And do you see these numbers? These numbers coordinate with the number that's on the tile. I think what we're going to do is have them on the wall available back there. We're gonna we're gonna glue them on there with with some really really heavy duty glue so they stay to that brick wall. <clears throat> but this one right here, you can see the color. It's going to be very shiny. Ignore that red color there. That's a red clay that this artist was using. Okay, our clay is not red. We used white or gray. It turned white. Um, but that's the color you're going to get and then it says use on textured pieces because this is an excellent color to use on the texture if you have any engraving texture ideas like this it would look really pretty on anything like that okay <clears throat> or if you had a design on the bottom i don't have one i'll have one in the other room where i had designed like a pretty design on the bottom and um, it looks good on stuff like that <clears throat> because <clears throat> it'll pull up into your crevices and really get darker and then lighter so you get different variations, okay? This is, if you look at it, it's an opalescent. Anytime you see this, cone 05 glaze, anytime you see that, <clears throat> that means that that glaze is going to be shiny, okay? Opalescent, it's a cone 05 glaze. Cone 05 fires um, 2,400 degrees, okay? So, 
that is our gloss. Remember I said we have matte, we have semi-gloss and gloss, okay? That's our gloss. This is our matte. Anything that is an underglaze is going to be a matte finish, okay? So when this red, this was an underglaze, when this red was applied to the here, to this piece, and it was fired and it came out of the firing, this was not shiny, okay? This red was very matte. How did I get this shiny? I dipped it into the clear glaze after it was fired one time, and then I went ahead and, and placed it. And that's why it's glossy now, okay? So in order to get these underglazes glossy, you have to put a shiny overcoat to them, okay? Now, underglaze can also be used, <clears throat> so, hold on, Mishima, okay? Now, Scraffito, Scraffito. There's a video on Scraffito, look at it, watch it, you might wanna do it. If you wanna do another type of decorative technique, do Scraffito. Um, <clears throat> paint this, paint this on here. I could paint this whole section blue if I wanted, all the way around this, this area. <laughs> two coats maybe, two to three coats. And then don't let it, don't let your piece dry. <laughs> Keep it leather hard. But when the, when the underglaze is dry, then you can take tools like this little ribbon tool, these little ribbon tools, here's a good ribbon tool, depending on how big you want your carving, and you can carve in your intricate details. So you'll have a background color and your carved in intricate details are going to turn white after it's fired once because we have gray clay gray clay turns white in the kiln okay so then you'll have these white lines which will kind of be pretty and then if you want them to be glossy you would dip it into the clear gloss layer so that's graffito mishima I kind of went through the process of mishima um and then there are all all kinds of other decorative techniques i mean you could just do this is a decorative technique carving a design into it, that's a decorative technique, okay? So, all kinds, just helping you. I just know we have a lot of new students right now, so I'm trying to give options for them and kind of work through the process with the new students, really. But, maybe you are a student that had me last semester and you're forgetting some of these techniques. Or you haven't yet watched the videos yet, like I instructed you to do, so. Please watch them so that you are not completely lost. Um, <clears throat> make sure that you're working hard at, you know, getting these pieces to all create synthesis together. They need to be all related to your culture. Um, they're, you know, they're not independent of each other. Pick a color, a design element, something that unifies them all, okay? So, I hope you're enjoying your time working with your cultural heritage unit. Let me know if you have or if you have questions or need help.